Hi, hello everybody. Welcome again to another session of One Question a Day. The question that we are going to discuss is shedding of deciduous teeth. A very important topic. We all know that the answer key should be beginning with the human dentition is dihyphodont, meaning we have two sets of teeth. The one is the deciduous tooth. The next is the permanent dentition and the transition phase called as mixture dentition. The physiological process uh, that results in the elimination of deciduous dentition is called as the shedding of teeth or exfoliation. It's a physiological, not a pathological process. The physiological process that results in the elimination of deciduous dentition is called as exfoliation. The reason why that necessitates that humans require two dentition because the infant jaws are small. Most of our growth, human growth occurs outside the uterus and the size and the number of tooth in infancy is very limited. Also, the dietary pattern is widely changing after adulthood. So as the teeth that is once formed cannot increase in size, a new dentition consisting of a large, more firm and stable teeth is required. Hence, the evolution has placed us with two sets of dentitions. The foremost necessity for the shedding of dentition is the removal of the deciduous dentition, which happens to be mediated by a unique cell called as odontoclast. Odontoclasts are described as large multinucleated cells that is responsible for the resorption of dental heart tissues. Histologically and functionally, they are very much similar to that of osteoclasts. They are again like osteoclasts derived from monocytes and migrate from the blood vessels to the resorption site. Right? Pattern of shedding. They have numerous mitochondria, actively shedding endo rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, multinucleated with a ruffle border that secretes acid phosphatase to resorb the minerals in the tooth structures. Like osteoblasts, they also have resorption base. The pattern of shedding. The shedding of deciduous teeth is result of progressive incremental resorption progressive incremental resorption of roots of tooth and their supporting tissue namely the periodontal ligament the pressure generated by the developing or growing and erupting permanent teeth is a single most important pat, uh, factor that determines the pattern of deciduous tooth resorption i repeat the pressure generated by the growing and erupting permanent teeth is a single most important factor that determines the pattern of deciduous tooth resorption. The pressure is usually directed against the root surface of the deciduous tooth itself. The developing tooth germs of the permanent incisors and canine, that is the anterior tooth, are positioned lingual to their corresponding deciduous teeth, are positioned lingual. So during eruption of the permanent teeth, the deciduous undergo physiological movement in occlusal and vestibular direction, initiating resorption of the deciduous incisors and canines on their lingual surface. The posterior teeth, the resorption of the roots of the deciduous molars often begin on the inner surface of the interradicular area. The resorption occurs along before the deciduous molars are shed and reflects the expansion of their growing successors. As a result of the continued growth of the jaws, the occlusal movement of the deciduous molars and the suctional tooth germs come to lie apical to the deciduous molar. This change in position provides the growing bicuspid or the succinous tooth with adequate space for their continued development also relieves the pressure from the developing or the pressure on the roots of the deciduous molars. The areas of early resorption are required by the deposition of a cementum like tissue. When the bicuspid begins to erupt, resorption of molars is again initiated, then continues until the roots are completely lost and the tooth are shed. Therefore, the pattern is slightly mesial and between the radicals, between the roots of the molars, deciduous molars. Clinical consideration. 
lingually erupting permanent tooth if permanent tooth germ do not undergo movement to become position below the deciduous tooth the tooth erupts lingually to the deciduous tooth this is most important factor lingually erupting permanent tooth for molars it is usually lingually erupting permanent tooth 